Miller, associate head coach, TCU Frogs. Here's some driveway drills we got. First thing I, I want you all to do is make sure you obey your stay-at-home orders. Keep your hands clean, don't touch your face, and then when you get a nice clean basketball, it's time to go to get the driveway and go to work. First thing we like to do is just warm up with some stationary dribbles, okay? We'll do some stationary dribbles, and then what we'll do is do some windshield wipers, right hand. Then we'll bring back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right hand, then left hand. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right hand again on the outside of the leg. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Left hand, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then we can go around the right leg a little bit. Right leg dribble, right leg dribble. All, right, all things you can do at the home. You don't need anything, you just need a basketball and a driveway. Left, left hand, left hand, left hand. Then we got figure eights we can do, figure eight. Ooh. Try not to lose control if you do, no big deal. It means you're getting out of your comfort zone. Okay, all drills you can do right from your home. All you need is a basketball, a clean set of hands, and go to work. This is Coach Broussard with Driveway Drills. This is something that I have always thought was very fond in my career when I started playing basketball, you know, 25, 30 years ago, okay? I didn't have a hoop, but I had a basketball. And that's what makes this game so unique because you don't need a big court, a big field, or an indoor arena or whatever. You just need the basketball and yourself and just an idea of how you want to get better, okay? So let me demonstrate a couple drills um, that, I, that I used to do and that you can do while you're at home in this current pandemic situation. Oh, and by the way, please stay safe and wash your hands constantly, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just stationary ball handling, okay? I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna bend my knees, I'm gonna have my backside down, I'm gonna look up, and I'm gonna take the ball in my right hand and I'm just gonna dribble just like this, okay? If you wanna do it for 15 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute, you can, okay? Just trying to work the muscles in the arm, trying to get the ball in your fingertips, okay, and making sure your head is up, okay? So we do this for 15 or 30, or, or, or all the way to a minute, okay? And then we switch to the left hand, okay? It's the same thing, my hands up, okay? My backside's down, my knees are bent, okay? And I'm trying to mimic what it would be like if I'm approaching a defender, okay? If I'm approaching a defender, and if I have to switch over from hand to hand, keeping my eyes up so I can see the defense and see the rim, okay? Okay, that's what we, that's what we try to do, okay? That's called stationary ball handling, okay? Okay, so now once you've mastered the idea of stationary ball handling, right to left and then back right, okay? Then we can transition from that to actually moving with the basketball as we're trying to advance to score or trying to advance the pass, okay? Now remember, we don't have a basketball court. We just have a driveway, okay? And it's just you and the ball and your imagination, okay? So as you're going through this, as you're going through some of these driveway drills, just try to picture a defender in front of you. Okay, and if that's the case, sometimes you may have to incorporate different moves, all right? So this next move is just gonna be between the legs. Okay, I'm gonna start out dribbling with my right hand. Okay, my right hand, then I'm gonna advance the ball, and then I'm gonna go between my legs. Okay, I'm gonna go between my legs. I'm gonna keep the ball low, and I'm gonna explode through my legs, just like that. Keep my head up, and I'm coming back right to left, right to left as I advance, okay? And then to make this really interesting, you go back like a retreat step. You go back, okay? I know all of you who are watching this are thinking I'm a pretty good ball handler. <laughs> but that's what you can do too, okay? And just keep going back, keeping your legs bent and your eyes up. And there you have it, driveway drills. This is Tony Bifford, assistant head basketball coach here at TCU, and I'm bringing driveway drills to you. I also want to send out a shout out to all our first responding healthcare workers. We really appreciate the great job that you guys are doing saving lives. Our first drill today, we're gonna to talk about uh, passing, okay? Uh, a lot of you may not have a basket at home, but one of the things you can work on is your passing skills. That's one of the skills I think that's uh, that's uh, lost today with a lot of the young players, but we're going to work on basic passing. The first pass we're going to work on today is a chest pass, a basic chest pass, okay? These are drills we do here at TCU every day with our team, okay? All we want to do is get the ball start out in good triple threat position. I'm going to step towards my teammate and just snap it right there, right there. We try to make about, we'll make about 25 of these, okay? Just snap it towards our, tar uh, our partner, trying to hit him on the numbers, on time, on targets. Without me, the ball with two hands, catching with 
Deliver with two hands, catch it with two hands. Deliver with two hands, catch it with two hands, okay? That's one of the drills that we do every day, the chest pass, okay? Another drill that we'll do, be bounce passes, okay? Same thing, I wanna to step towards my target, towards my teammate, okay? Step and make sure the ball bounces up where he can catch it on time, on target, okay? So I'm stepping, going out of receiver with two hands, passing where the ball's bouncing up to his chest, stepping it out, going to get the basketball, where it bounces right to his chest, right there where my partner can catch it, he can catch the ball and do something with it. When he catches, it, always in a triple threat position. Another drill that we have, you can do with two, let's say you have two balls, okay? And you can get your mom and dad out here to work with you or your brother and sister, all right? Okay, one of the things we're gonna do, we have two balls here. I'm gonna make, with my partner, I'm gonna make a bounce pass. My partner's gonna make a chest pass, okay? So it's gonna be bounce pass, chest pass, okay? Then we can change it up as we're doing, going through the, through the uh, routine, all right? So I'm starting out with a bounce pass. My partner's gonna start out with a chest pass, all right? Bounce pass, chest pass. 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 Now I'm making a chest pass, making a bounce pass. Chest pass, 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 bounce pass. That's one drill that you can also do with two balls. A more advanced drill that you can do uh, for some of you high school players, and some of you probably do this drill as a part of drills you can do with obviously with these two balls. Okay, we're going to handle it. We're going to dribble it two times, cross quick crossover and pass it, okay? Moving, talking, we also want to communicate to our, our teammates, calling their names out while we're working on these drills, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do right here, I'm gonna start drilling one, two, I'm gonna cross it, and I'm gonna toss it overhand. Catch it, one, two, cross, toss. Okay, one, two, cross, toss. One, two, cross, toss. Then we can change and go over our left to right, same, same routine. Hi there, my name is Brian James. I'm speaking to you from Northwestern University I'm an assistant basketball coach for our Wildcat basketball team, and I'm speaking to you from our beautiful brand new Trinan's Performance Center. I'm going to show you eight to 10 different drills that all these youngsters could do almost every single day to improve your game as you see fit. I've done these drills with players all the way from elementary school, junior high, high school age, NBA, since I coached in the NBA for 18 years, and now I'm in my eighth season at Northwestern. We and our players do these drills multiple times per week, not only in individual skill sessions, but pre-practice, warm up, and throughout post-practice drills to get ourselves to be as good as we can possibly be on the court. Again, I wanna introduce our participants, and these are two of the best basketball players we've ever had here at Northwestern. I want to start with Jashawn Cobb, who's now our Director of Player Development in our program, and also this is Bryant McIntosh, former point guard on our NCAA tournament team, and he's now our video coordinator and our Assistant Director of Basketball Ops. What we're going to do, we're going to start with the mic and drill, all right, and we're going to have Jashawn be our Student example for Mikan's, and the Mikan drill is based after George Mikan, one of the first great centers in basketball in the National Basketball Association. And they're alternating layups off one leg. So let's do 10 of these, Jashan, and we'll show you. And I'll talk you through it, okay? Go ahead and just do it. Jashan makes a right hand layup and a left hand layup. Now notice he tries to keep the ball up high, he doesn't let the ball drop and he works on banking the ball right off the board into the basket. Let's do about four more, Jashan. Okay, great, awesome, awesome. Okay, thanks. All right, you notice he went about 12 for 12, all right, but he concentrated on th putting the ball right off the square into the board. As you get better, become quicker and get the ball out of your hand right away. Here's BMAC, he's gonna show you what a block-to-block -block drill consists of. Bank shots right off the glass. He catches the ball, he gets rid of the ball in a hurry. You notice Deshaun gives him a high pass, so he doesn't bring the ball down by his belt. He shoots it in a shooting, perfect shooting pocket, and he works on his form and his quick release. It doesn't necessarily have to develop into a good shooter by shooting long shots. This is where you start to become a good shooter. Let's do two more, BMAC. One and two. You notice he did not miss a single one. 
You could do this drill every day. All right, the drills that we're going to show you now, along with all our little shooting drills, are dribbling and passing drills. I want to say one other thing. All of these drills, you don't need a gymnasium to do them in. You can do these in your driveway. All you need is a basket. Now you don't even need a basket. The first drill that we're going to do, we're going to do four dribbles as fast as we can. Two right hand, a crossover, and a crossover back. You ready? Start. You notice they hold the ball. Start. 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 Now once they do that as fast as you can, we tell our dribblers we want a low, hard dribble, especially on your last one. We want you to dribble hard. Now we're going to add a gather with the two hands after the dribble and throw it with your right hand to the other person's left hand. Ready? Start. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Now we're going to do the same drill, but we're going to dribble only with our left hand. And instead of staying start, I'm going to yell go. Go! No pass. No pass. Go! 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 See how good they get? Okay? And the more you do this, the quicker you're going to become. Now we're going to add the pass. So as you gather it up, we teach two-hand passing at Northwestern. We don't want a, just a one-hand pass on this drill. On this drill. You ready? Go! Go! You see how they dribble and pass at the same time. Go! 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 All right, stop. That's great. Okay? All right, so now we've done the four dribbles and the passing. Now we're going to do a series of passing drills that I have done for many years. And I learned these from a famous clinician by the name of George Lehman back early in my coaching days. And, and these drills, again, you're about 10 to 15 feet apart, that's it. And what I want you to do is the first one, you're gonna hold the ball in your right hand and you throw to the other person's left hand. And then after you catch it, you transfer the ball to your right hand. We are throwing right hand passes only. Right hand passes only. Ready? Go! See? Go! 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 All right, stop. Okay, now let's just do them one at a time like you just did with the left hand pass. Ready? Go! 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 All right, see how good a job they did? Now we're going to add a little tricky pass, but it helps with our ball handling and, and, and there's no dribbling involved. What we're going to do, we're going to show you one at a time. Both basketball players are going to put the ball right here in between your legs, right in front of them. And then I want you to go down with your left and up with your right and throw it to your partner. All right? And then after each one, let's stop. Ready? Go. 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 Stop. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the two ball drill, but we're going to throw with the left hand. All right? Go. 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 Awesome. And the last two dribbling drills that we're going to do. Bryant, what I want you to do is you throw Jashad a chest pass. I want you to throw a bounce pass, okay? And we're going to just do about 10 of those where you throw a chest pass and Jashad throws a bounce pass, all right? Uh, we'll start out slow and we'll stop after each one. Ready? Go. 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 All right, stop. Now, once you've mastered that, 
Our final drill is when I yell switch, you're gonna switch the type of pass that you make. You're gonna start with the chest, you're gonna start with the bounce, and then when I say switch, Jashan will throw a chest and BMAC will throw a, a bounce pass. Ready? Let's go. come in here. Again, I want to say thank you to Bryant McIntosh, Jershon Cobb, two members of our staff, two former great players of ours. This has been Brian James at Northwestern. Hopefully all of you youngsters got a little something out of this clinic that you could use every day to be a better player. Be a good person off the court, be a great person on the court, be a coach's ally, and learn as many drills as you can to be the best basketball player you can. Thank you. My name is Chuck Martin. I'm an assistant coach here at the University of South Carolina. I'm in my fourth year under head coach Frank Barton. Today we're going to talk about three simple things. Shooting the ball, passing the ball, and then driving the ball. So the first drill that we're going to tackle, we call it our toss-out drill. For those of you who can't find a partner, a rebounder, and you're in your backyard or at your local school, you only have one basket and it's just you and a basketball, this is a pretty good drill for you to learn how to shoot the ball and really try to perfect the art of shooting. So I've got one of our managers here, Luke, who's gonna spend some time with us and kind of demonstrate the drill. The first thing we've got to figure out is um, how your range, right, and, and your skill set. So for today's demonstration, we'll, we're gonna start right around this area with Luke Luke is gonna to toss this ball out to the elbow area right here. And anytime you're inside the three-point line, all we wanna do is kinda of just toss it out, right? And we wanna go chase the ball as hard as we can. We wanna run through the ball. We wanna get under the ball. So as that ball is being tossed out, I wanna run through it, I wanna get under it. And anytime you're inside the three-point line, we wanna go inside foot. So now I wanna go left, right into my shot, hips are down, elbow underneath the ball, and then we want to repeat that on the other side. So we're going to let uh, Luke demonstrate what this looks like. He's going to take four, sh four shots in total uh, with our toss-out drill. So we'll let Luke start us off. Luke tosses it out. He gets underneath the basket, underneath the ball. Good shot. He repeats the same thing on the other side. So now it's just a simple toss-out. We've got footwork, inside foot, get under the ball, shoot it. Make a mess, he rebounds his own shot, and now we're doing the same thing on the other side. And all we're doing is trying to find a rhythm, trying to work on our footwork, trying to work on our form. Quick toss out, inside foot, get under the ball, make shots. So now this is a simple drill for, for you young guys who are by yourselves, in your backyards, if you're, if you're on a court, in your neighborhood and there's no one else around to rebound for you, this is a simple drill. You can take as many shots as you like. You can take six shots, you can take 10 shots, you can spend a half hour, and you can't do this enough. The keys to it is to toss the ball out, run through the ball, drop your hips, inside pivot, elbow underneath the ball, and get a nice high arc on your, on your release. So hopefully you guys can take this drill and really improve your, uh, your ability to shoot the ball. The second thing that we're going to work on is simple uh, passing. I think uh, I think if you can pass the ball, you can you can play um, you can play the game. So, but it, that skill set is lacking over the past few years. I think fundamentally we've gotten away from our ability to pass the ball. So, in this drill, um, unless you have an, a wall, uh, which you can do it with a wall. Right now, I'm just going to jump in with Luke to kind of demonstrate a simple passing drill. And what you're going to do is you're going to stand with your partner. Uh, lane line extended. If you don't have a partner, but you do have a wall um, that you can use, you kind of use, you know, maybe five to six feet. And all I'm doing is I'm going to start off with the ball right here. All I'm doing is I'm going to place my 
This is kind of old school, uh, uh, five star Eastern Invitational. I'm just grabbing that ball right here. My thumbs are right there. And all I'm doing is I'm, I'm making a simple chest pass. All right, so that pass is coming from this area and I'm stepping towards uh, Luke right now. My thumbs are down, just a simple pass. Luke returns that back to me. And then again, I'm just working on it. I'm stepping to my passes, I'm following through. And as you start to feel more comfortable with your partner, and you start to feel more comfortable if you're by yourself and you're using a wall, then now maybe take a step further back, maybe one or two steps. And then what, I, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna lose your, your, your fundamentals. So now you don't wanna compromise uh, the distance um, with your, for your fundamentals. So a little bit further away within your range, within your strength, and now Another chest pass, all I'm doing is stepping to my pass. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can, and I'm trying to be as sharp with my pass as I possibly can. I'm trying to deliver that pass to Luke. Yep, as, as sharp as I can. Again, if you have a partner, maybe he gives me a target, so now I can really work on how accurate the pass is gonna be. If you don't have a partner, and you have a wall, then maybe you pick a spot on the wall and, and uh, a landmark on the wall where you can kind of hit that target and really work on it. Simple chest pass, I'm stepping to it. My thumbs are down, there's good rotation. It's accurate, it's on point. On your team, whether it's an AAU team or a high school team or a middle school team, whatever offense you run, right, have some imagination. When will you use this? Is it an outlet pass? Center rebounds the ball, it's a miss. You're on the sideline, imagination. I'm trying to hit ahead, advance the ball. So now you can have a little bit of imagination as you're delivering the ball. Once you've made this chest pass a few times, let's try to add to it. So let's talk about now making a bounce pass. So as we're trying to make that bounce pass, the, cha the most challenging thing for, for young players is the distance. So how far to make the pass? Usually it's about three quarters of the way. So right now, I'm gonna to attempt to make a chest pass to Luke, three quarters of the way. I want it to be a sharp pass, hit the ground and then hit my target in his hands. So let's see what that looks like real quick. Luke will return back to me. I'm stepping to my pass. I'm trying to deliver that pass. As you start to feel more comfortable, imagination, trying to figure out in your mind, within your offense, when will you use a, uh, a bounce pass? Is it a back door out the corner? You know, is it a back door? You're trying to back door the, uh, the guy at the uh, top of the key if you're on the wing. When will you make that pass? As you start to feel more comfortable, maybe we take another step back. So now a little bit more distance, right? So we got to adjust a little bit to the pass. Snap it out three quarters of the way. And I'm a firm believer, if you, if you really understand how to pass the ball, there's a place in the game for you. So very few times, um, often in today's game, uh, passing the ball becomes the, uh, the forgotten art. So if you can spend two or three minutes on a chest pass, a bounce pass, I think you're gonna be a better player. This takes us to our last drill, our, our ability to handle the ball. If you can handle the ball, whether it's in middle school, grammar school, high school, collegiate level, or the professional level, uh, the better you can control the ball, the, the greater the chance of you having success. So again, this is a pretty simple uh, drill. You don't need anyone but a ball. You don't really need a basket. Um, you can do it in your backyard. You can do it in front of your building, in a parking lot. And it's really, really simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Luke kind of demonstrate and um, Luke's gonna stand maybe right here at the SEC. And all we're gonna do is, we're gonna drop our hips. I'm gonna show, and then Luke's gonna demonstrate. I just wanna drop my hips, chest out, eyes up, head up, and I'm just gonna drive the ball to the ground as hard as I can for about 15 seconds with my right hand. And all I'm trying to do is control the ball, find a rhythm before I switch hands from right to left. So right now, let's see what it looks like with Luke. All I'm going to do is just drive the ball. Good. I can start out really slow. There's no rush. We're trying to get better. We're trying to improve. 
Once he starts to feel comfortable, I drive that ball a little bit harder. Good. The most important thing is control the basketball. As I start to feel more comfortable, let's drive it a little bit harder, a little bit quicker. Good. I feel pretty good. I feel comfortable with the ball in my right hand. I'm going to switch right to left. So now I'm going to do the same thing with my left hand now. I'm going to drive the ball into the ground. Good. Just trying to fundamentally control the ball with my weak hand. As I feel more comfortable, drive a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. Pretty good. Stop. Right? We'll stop there. I appreciate you guys spending some time with us, and uh, hopefully you guys got something out of it. And, um, you know, go Gamecocks. Time to make your disappointing breakfast your ex-fist, because Wendy's has your new breakfast love. With a fresh cracked egg on every sandwich and crispy oven-baked bacon, you'll be telling everybody about the new breakfast you're seeing at Wendy's. Hurry in for the breakfast of your dreams today. This is Toby Lane. I'm an assistant coach at the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma, here to demonstrate some ball handling skills that you can do at home, in your driveway, in the court, basically anywhere where a basketball could be dribbled. I'm joined today by Corey Haith. He's our assistant to the head coach. He also played here at the University of Tulsa. So he's here to help us demonstrate and I know you'll appreciate this. Corey has not been practicing these moves, so he's going to be starting exactly where you guys are starting. So we're going to demonstrate some ball handling drills that you can do at home in small spaces. First thing we'll do is we're going to do stationary ball handling. Uh, and there's a lot of ball, stationary ball handling drills that can be done. Some real easy ones that, that I'm a huge fan of, that we're a huge fan of, are doing windshield wipers. So it's great to have a goal. So if we start with our right hand and go as wide, we're gonna go side to side as, as wide as we can. We call these windshield wipers. And our goal is 20 dribbles. Now Corey may not get to 20 here, he may get a little bit more, may get a little bit less. But again, a goal really can help us feel good about accomplishing something. So if we do 20 side to side, now we're gonna do 20 front to back. Again, going as far as we can front to back, getting a feel for the basketball, being able to control it, not turning it over, and also doing it in a legal fashion, not carrying, but getting a feel for the basketball. How far can I go with the basketball left to right and front to back? We also would do this with our weak hand, our left hand. And one thing I'll focus on is doing things maybe even more. As a young basketball player, you may want to do a few more drills or examples or repetitions with your weak hand. So again, windshield wipers, left to right, front to back. And we'll actually work on our weak hand. That's one thing with a lot of young players. If you can go to your weak hand, it's a great, great advantage to be able to do things on the basketball court and be a skilled player that can do a lot of different things. Next thing we'll do is we'll do cone drills where our cones are lined up in a line and we want to demonstrate some simple basketball fundamentals. If you don't have these small cones at home, you could also use small boxes that are maybe laying around your house. You can also use chairs. And chairs are a great representation of a defender. You could also use cans, like if you have canned goods at home, and certainly ask your parents if it's okay to use them or which cans you can use. But if you have cans that are really small, that are as obstacles or markers to go around. So the first thing we'll do is we'll weave through the cones. And one of the things we want to make sure of is in the game of basketball, when we're dribbling, we want to have the ball away from the defender. If I have the ball on the defender's side or next to the defender, obviously very easy to steal that basketball. But if I have it, the basketball opposite of the defender, it makes it hard. He has to go through my body and through my guide hand, my guard hand, to get to the basketball. So right now, Corey will demonstrate weaving through the cones and having the ball opposite away from these cones. And now we're gonna pretend these cones are defenders. Now, again, they're really, really small defenders. 
but that is especially at this level and even at our level, that's something we do. So Corey's gonna weave through the cones and he's gonna have the ball away from the cones. So he's gonna weave, so you're just gonna weave. So you're gonna weave right, ball in the left hand. Now ball in the right hand, away from the defender. Ball in the left hand, away from the defender. Ball in the right hand, ball in the left hand. So next thing we'll do is what I call a hesitation dribble or a stop and go. So Corey with his left hand, let's go with his left hand, is going to stop and go or hesitate, and sometimes we call it a hezi at every cone. So go ahead at every cone, we'll do a stop and go or a hesitation. Okay, good job, Corey. Thank you. Now, that was with his weak hand. Now we're going to go with his strong hand on the other side. Now, Corey, in this case, go a little bit faster where it's just like a stop and go. Stop and go. It's barely stopping and keeping the defense off balance. Again, playing at different speeds and being able to stop and make the defender stop and then you go at your own pace makes you faster. Next, we're going to do in and out. So with an in and out, we're going to just fake like we're going in and then we're going out. So it's almost like a fake crossover. We'll work on crossover dribbles later on, but while we're doing this in a straight line, we're going to go in. We're going to, so we're going to push off with our outside foot. Then I'm going to push off with my inside foot. So basically, it's a fake crossover, and some people may refer to it as a fake crossover. Go ahead, Corey. So in and out, in and out, push off make the defender think, oh, he's crossing over, but I'm not, and I'm going right by them. A very good, quick ball handling move, especially as we're going up the court in a fast way, and especially against one defender. Really, really hard to defend. We go in and out, in and out, push off. We want to work on pushing off with our feet to make it look like we're crossing over, but we're going to fake cross over and come back the same way. We're gonna go in circles just to get used to handling the ball with our weak hand. We're gonna go in a circle around each cone. Now, warning, if you go in a circle in the same direction on every cone, guess what? You're gonna end up getting dizzy eventually. So, what you wanna do is go in a circle one direction for one cone, get to the next cone, and you go in a circle in the opposite direction on the next cone, so you're gonna alternate going in circles. So go ahead and demonstrate that, Corey. So we're going to go with our weak hand, just go in a circle in a comfortable basketball stance, get to the next cone, go in a circle the opposite direction so that I can just get used to dribbling the basketball with my weak hand. Now one thing that a lot of people talk about when it comes to ball handling is we want to have our head up. Now when you're at the start of working on these drills, I believe it's okay to, you know, if you need to see the basketball a little bit to get used to where it is and handle it, especially as you are working on new moves, that's fine. But as you get more comfortable, our goal is, is to have our head up so that I can dribble the basketball and I know exactly where that ball is going to come up. I get a feel for it. I dribble it enough. And that's our goal in all these drills. Our last ball handling activity drill that we'll demonstrate is zigzag through cones. This is one of our favorites here at the University of Tulsa to work on tight ball handling. And again, this is getting a little bit more advanced than the weaving through cones, than the stationary ball handling. So Corey's gonna demonstrate this. And so we're gonna work on some basic moves. And again, if it only takes you, if you can only do an easy, okay, I got to struggle to get the ball between my legs and I've had to struggle to get a crossover. That's fine. The whole key is improving, getting better. So right now we have our cone set up where we have angles that we're going to go at and we have a good amount of space in between each cone. So right now, Corey's, what he's going to do is going to do a crossover. He's going to do a crossover on each cone. He's going to take a dribble in between. So right now we'll do Corey's going to do crossover, one dribble. Go ahead. So at each cone, crossover, one dribble, crossover, one dribble, crossover, one dribble, crossover, one dribble. So, and one thing that we want to work on and focus on is as I'm crossing over, I'm going to push off with that foot. So I want to, and I want to keep the ball 
pretty much within my body. I don't want it out here wide. If I have it out here wide, it can get stolen. I can lose control of it. And it, has to, it takes me farther to get to where I want to go. So next we'll do between the legs. And again, if that's something you're not used to doing, just try to go between the legs, get the ball back again, go between the legs, go between the legs. Here we go. Between the legs, one dribble. Between the legs, one dribble. Between the legs, one dribble. And we're pushing off. So when we go between our legs, we're pushing off and getting to the next one. And then, so Corey could actually do this back and forth. So hopefully that helps you. Two things I wanna encourage you with is setting small goals, like we talked about during the course of these ball handling drills. If you set small goals, set a goal of 20, set a goal of 10, it helps you feel good about what you've accomplished, about what you're doing. The second thing is being consistent. If you get a little bit better every day, if you work on this, these drills for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, you're gonna see an improvement. But doing small things, small goals, and being consistent is more important than doing, let's say one hour of ball handling once a week or one, one hour of ball handling once a day for a month. Let me challenge you with this. If you get 1% better every day for a year, if you get 1% better every day for one year, then after one year, you're gonna be three, more than three and a half times better than you were before you will be three and a half times better than you were 365 days before. Thank you for joining us here at the University of Tulsa. And I thank Corey Haith for his great demonstration of these drills.